week we spent a couple of really wet and windy nights in Green Turtle Quay. Teresa got scared by the thunder, I slept through it. Then we sailed back to Marsh Harbour to get ready for our Atlantic crossing. Abby. What's the plan? What, what, what do you want? We need to... A list of things to do or to buy? Both, everything. So we need to write a list of things that we need to do for our Atlantic crossing and things we need to buy for our Atlantic crossing. What list do you want to start with? Let's start with our to-do list. Okay. Cut the mast. Mm -hmm. Baggy wrinkle. Change soft shackle. Fix SSB aerial. Fix SSB aerial, what's wrong with it? Oh, it's just the, the wires snap, it just needs to be reconnected, but it's got to be done on the back state, which is a little bit tricky. Okay. Uh, that's, so that's the first thing. Um, Do you need to do your engine check? We'll service the engine. Oh, just check the engine. And just add a sub list to that. So that's oil, gearbox oil. Wait, is that two different types of oil? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, belt tension, raw water, water strainer. Uh, cooling fluid. What else do you need? The engine or just generally? Generally. Check all the sea cocks. Check and grease sea cocks. Check rigging. Check the uh, sat phone again. And then things like stow everything for sea. Yeah, well, that'll be done last minute. Check EPIRB works. Mm -hmm. Check grab bag contents. Um, we need to check the first aid kit. Yep. Check food supplies. We need to find out what staples we need to. You didn't write this in your book, did you? Okay, so I need, to, I need to take out all of the food that we've got and make a list of it, basically. <laughs> There's a lot of bush beer in there, mate. <laughs> to buy. We need to buy jerry cans. We need to buy some rope or something to tie them on. So we need to get some paracord or something. Red spade connectors. Uh, we need to get diesel. That's not very much. Oh, we need to buy pool noodles. Stroke um, insulating foam. Um, okay, so provisioning. Um, well, I guess I can't write this list. Do you want to know what we have? Let's leave it that, I'm trying that. <laughs> I'm exhausting myself. I think I've got mama in my eye. <laughs> so two bowlins. Two bowlins with long tails. Four now four strips of pool noodle that have been cut into hemicircles. One soft shackle, screwdriver, pliers, snips. And the old gaffer tape. You ready? Right.
So Sunday afternoon and the list of chores that we're doing before this crossing is becoming longer and longer and longer. One, floor, one chore that I do need to do which I don't like doing is desulfating the batteries and basically what we have to do with this is that batteries, we have uh, wet cell batteries which I, I like wet cell batteries despite all the flaws about them being dangerous but once a month when we're not connected to shore power that we need to kind of desulfate them which really means turning everything off and cranking the voltage on them um, through the solar just to blow any crud off of the plates which means that extends your battery life but you know it creates hydrogen gas you know which is explosive and we have to for that reason keep all the hatches open not have any naked flames all the electricity is off and that will go on for one hour so what have you actually done to the battery to do that? Basically on our solar controller, on the MPPT controller, there is an option to desulfate your batteries. It's the only way you can desulfate your batteries when you are at anchor. So talk us through the process. Well, basically most batteries, batteries at 12 volts, so a 12 volt battery is fully charged at 12 and a half volts. It is considered to be flat at 11 and a half volts. And we charge, our batteries will normally charge at between 13 and a half and 14.5 volts. But uh, desulfating your batteries means that for one hour, in the case of our controller, it puts the charge up to 16 volts. So that high charge is meant to kind of like take any corrosion off the plates and kind of re-equilibrize, re-equilibrize, uh, equilibrize, yeah, f it, what is the word? Basically equalize, equalize the the, the concentration of battery acid in each cell because you get the thing called striation where you have um, a more concentrated battery acid at the bottom of the cell and um, less concentrated at the top. So it's just, it's just basically meant to equalize things and give your batteries a better life. Okay, so one of the things that I need to do before we uh, even provision for our ocean crossing is to check everything that we already have on board. Nick already uh, did some provisioning when he was in the US but he obviously didn't write a list so I, I don't actually know what he has and he's forgotten what he, he bought. So bush beer! Bush beer! <laughs> it's all bush beer! We remember. 500 cans of bush beer. We remember the bush. bush beer. Send us an email, we'll send you a can of beer. Bush beer. Right so <laughs> Shut up! So my job today is to take all of our provisions out of the lockers and do an inventory. Isn't that right darling? Yes, don't forget toilet paper, kitchen roll and beans. <laughs> okay, so this is our storage area for all of our provisions that we have for any kind of uh, long offshore passage. Um, it's not very much and this is you know definitely um, one of the shortcomings of our boat. Beautiful as she is, she doesn't have a huge amount of storage space. So we have to be really smart about what we take with us and make sure that it's stuff that we actually need and will use. Um, Nick has, to his credit, uh, labelled all of the cans. Um, so that's one job that's been done. I will take all of the um, wrappings off the cans now because if there's any leak or if any water gets into this locker, then um or this this build space what will happen is that the um can uh wrappers or the can covers um can obviously disintegrate um if they get wet and then they end up you know all down the bottom of the bilges and um that's not a good thing um and i also make it, need to make an inventory of everything that we have he's bought toilet paper so that's one good thing <laughs> And the, seriously, the bush beer is taking up like at least three quarters of the space in here. Oh, so drink it. that is being gotten rid of. <laughs> and this is my birthday cake. <laughs> I'm gonna have a birthday at sea, I think. So we bought a birthday cake. Very important. Did we end up buying icing? Yes, we bought icing because she wanted icing. And I thought icing was good because I can always just eat it with a spoon. Okay, so. We are leaving for our crossing to Bermuda in about, what day is it? In about four days. So although we're not yet ready to do our provisioning for all our fresh food and our perishables, we are going to start provisioning uh, for the non-perishable stuff. I remember last time when we crossed the Atlantic in 2015, this was something that I absolutely obsessed over. I went to these seminars, these information sessions that the World Cruising Club put on that were really helpful and informative um, 
but I was just so fixated on how to provision the three weeks at sea for four people, we had four people then, um, you know, questions like how long does broccoli last and how much toilet paper do I need for everyone and you know how much kitchen towel and how much meat will everyone eat and of course don't forget that we have very limited space on board so every kind of square inch needs to be filled with something that is actually going to be consumed or used at some point so it was quite the undertaking I felt really intimidated by the entire provisioning operation and in one of the seminars uh, the, the woman who was taking the seminar said something that I really took to heart which was even if you set off with no food you will still be alive when you get to the other end after three weeks as long as you have water you will still survive three weeks without food so try just to keep a bit of perspective and that really comforted me okay you would be in a pretty sad state and not very healthy at the end of three weeks of starvation but you you don't really need to be stressing to the point where you're losing sleep over how much to take what to take you know what kind of food everyone wants all that kind of stuff so this time I'm gonna be a bit more relaxed about it um, I am gonna make some lists because that's just in my nature but I'm gonna try not to fret about it too much because I know that we've only got about a six or seven day passage to Bermuda and then Bermuda to the Azores will be probably a couple of weeks and then once we're in the Azores we can just reprovision uh, for the next leg, for the third leg. So I'm feeling relaxed about it. So we're going to go to Maxwell's and we're going to get some stuff and I've got a bit of an idea in my mind of things that I want but I think we're just going to pretty much wing it. So we're uh, three days out. It's Thursday today we leave Folk Fritzy Sunday and we have worked out that Thursday is the day that the fruit and veg gets stocked up in the supermarket. So what we're doing is buying veg that's going to last and we know that certain things will last longer than other things. Butternut squash tends to last for months. Potatoes don't last very long at all. Limes last longer than lemons. So we will fill up the basket full of bits and bobs. Um, it should take us to the Bermuda at the very least and uh, we'll take it from there. One thing I need to do today which is um, something we always do before offshore passage involves my favourite, my nail wire and a pair of pliers and it basically means going around the boat it takes well probably about two or three minutes uh, per shackle and it's seizing the shackles and seizing the shackles means that you put a little bit of wire through the hole in the shackle pin and then tighten it and it basically means that your shackles can't work their way loose under sail um, it's just another precaution to make sure that you know you don't lose your spinnaker halyard you don't lose your mainsail because something's worked its way loose and sod's law states it will always happen at the most inopportune time so i'm going to get this done i'm going to go around the entire boat and do every single main shackle with seizing wire manel wire uh, and um pair of pliers monel wire is um useful don't use any other wire um the thing about monel wire it, it has low galvanic uh, corrosion so it, it's resistant to galvanic corrosion what happens is that if you seize um if you use different metals or you use different wires um, or different different metalled wires against stainless steel or other metals you end up with corrosion between the two because dissimilar metals corrode where you add a medium like salt salt water so only use manel wire for seizing your shackles just a really important tip makes me sleep slightly easier off watch and when i sleep slightly easier off watch everyone's life is easier so so it is uh, the day before departure day uh, we're leaving tomorrow morning for our i think 720 mile passage to bermuda uh, we've got a really good forecast we've got uh, south to begin with moving around to the south and then maybe even southwest leaves later in the week so um yeah it's gonna be all good i think we're gonna have a few schools especially over the first couple of days but that's right nothing like that handle and I'm just doing um, dinner for tomorrow night so that we've got that all done. We don't have to do any cooking tomorrow. Um, and today we, well, amongst our other chores, uh, we have to clean the hull because it hasn't been done in some time. When it cut the months. It's, it's about anti fouled Yeah, it's anti fouled of course, yeah. So we just need to, to scrape the hull. Clean. Right, and um, yeah. 
So we've got to drop the kill. Yeah. So we've got to drop the kill. Okay. Clean yeah. up the kill. Scrape everything off. Um, and go for a lovely dinner in Firefly. That's right. And then to reward ourselves, we're going to go to Firefly for dinner, which I'm excited about. I'm sad that it's the last time we're going to be there. All right, Therese. So what Hi. are these for? They're for cleaning the hull. So our job is to get this hull smooth. It is. Smooth. Very smooth. Slippery smooth like Just like you. Alexander O'Neill. Smooth like Barry White. I think you're showing your age again. Smooth like a mink. No. Smooth like a mink. I know where this is going Stop. and Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and join us next week. Next week is our last weekend in the Bahamas. We have a few beers, we pick up our crew and then set sail for Bermuda.